Hi, Wendia. I'm Hannah from Circle of Drink. Um, a few weeks ago I put out my introduction video just explaining that I'm going to be doing some videos for Circle of Drink on the nutritional benefits of drinking yerba mate. This week it's a, a topic that's near and dear to my heart. Um, it's diabetes and yerba mate. And it's, it's so close to me because I myself am a type 1 diabetic. Um, and I have seen the benefits of drinking yerba mate on a daily basis. So before I can really get into the studies about what mate has been proven to do um, for you as a diabetic or, or for someone who is diabetic, um, I want to just go into a little bit of the background about diabetes and diagnosing diabetes and how to tell if it's really controlled or not. Um, there are two tests when you're getting diagnosed with diabetes. The first is um, your fasting glucose, which is after about 8 to 12 hours you haven't eaten. You can take your blood sugar and you're trying to just see what your base level is without having an impact of carbohydrates. Um, if you're above 126 uh, milligrams per deciliter, then you can be diagnosed as either type 1 or type 2 diabetic. Um, the other test is called your hemoglobin A1C, HbA1c, or most people just say A1C, and it's a test to kind of show the average of three, two to three months of what your sugars are, and it comes out in a percentage. So a normal person's A1C would be about 4.5% um, to 5.5%, whereas if you're diabetic, you're really striving to stay under 7.0%. And what it shows is that average of what your sugars are because throughout the day you have different impacts that will raise your sugar from your base level or maybe drop it below. And um, you wanna be able to see kind of the full picture. So heat or stress, exercise, all of that can affect what your sugars are at any given moment, at any given snapshot. And what, you know, and of course eating carbohydrates because if you eat even if you have normal insulin production um, and you eat a ton of carbohydrates, you're gonna see a rise in your sugars. You might see it to 160, 180 if you don't have diabetes, whereas if I drink a, a glass of orange juice, I might see it rise to 400 or 500. And so really to show control of diabetes and to not have long-term effects of this chronic disease, you're trying to keep your levels as close to normal at any given time. And so you're trying to lower that spike, which is called your glycemic index. And by lowering that, it's kind of the best way to keep your A1C in check. So it kind of becomes this bragging right as a controlled diabetic of what your A1C is. I came back from Argentina where they eat a ton of bread and a ton of potatoes, and I have an A1C of 6.5. And I definitely walk around my doctor's office pretty much bragging about it all the time. But I really do think a large part of that control comes from drinking this amazing tea. Um, there have been different studies on animals that have shown impact of lowering, you know, your weight, which can affect that glycemic control, as well as studies that show that it affects your, your sugar directly on animals. They can keep it lower and more controlled um, than, than animals who are not having mate. Um, in 2011, there was a study done on humans by the American College of Nutrition. And basically, you know, it's very important when you have a study done on humans because it's how it impacts your body directly. And so what they did is they took 29 type 2 diabetic patients and they took 29 pre-diabetic patients. So anybody who's, um, you know, sugars are elevated from the normal person, but they're not quite above 126 fasting glucose. Um, and they, they put them on three different, they put them into three different interventions. So the first being drinking yerba mate three times a day for 60 days. The second, just dietary nutritional education and, and programming and nutrition uh, intervention. And then one that was a nutrition intervention and drinking yerba mate. What they found is after 20 days, which isn't even a full three months, 20 to 40 days that um, they averaged about 0.85% lower in their A1C. And to put that kind of into other numbers, it's not a percent, that means that their sugars were about 45 um, milligrams per deciliter lower on the average, but there wasn't much change within their fasting glucose. So it's re it was really helping with those, those spikes that you have from eating or from stresses or anything, and just your sugars throughout the day. It was able to really like level them and show improvement. And that, that's what's really interesting because that can be taken from a study of type 2 diabetics and put to also type 1 because what it's showing is that throughout the day when you eat something or you do something that might spike your sugars, um, 
you can also be drinking this tea that, that can kind of help to counteract that. And that's really important and that will help with long-term problems that might come from diabetes. It really does help control. But the coolest part of all of that is that, you know, as a diabetic, a lot of, a lot of things are hindered when it comes to going out to eat. Um, if you're really controlled, you can't eat the same things as your friends or sometimes it's just hard to go out because you're tempted by the big, huge pile of bread that is always put on your table which is just so hard to not eat. And so, you know, it's something, mate is social, it's fun. So you can, you can grab some mate and you can go in a circle and, and sit with your friends and have great conversation and have that, but not have the sugar spike and actually be fighting the sugar spikes that you might have throughout the day. So, um, I hope that, you know, this is a little interesting for, for you and, and really keep drinking yerba mate. It's, it's great for you and I'll see you soon. Ciao. Nos vemos.